episode 48. I am your host, Fritz, joined as always by co host Man Daddy. Hi. Nick Spry. Hello. Angela. Hello. And Kaz. How? We are having an excellent summer at Fort Fritz. I'm over here just uh, tankling away on the old piano. Just tickling those ivories, are you? I'm tickling them. Tickling them just a little bit. Making sure that they know I mean business. And you do. And uh, I see Kat, <laughs> Kaz and Nick Spry over here doing the old Charleston. <laughs> Look at those guys. Is it the knee? It's, an, it's the knees thing, right? Like you do yeah. the knees, like you're crossing your knees. Got to loosen up a little bit. Yeah, loosen up. Just got to swing that leg out. But check out this skirt. I got the flapper Ooh, skirt. Look at that. Like, swishing. Like, Why are you wearing a skirt? It's fucking. I'm, I came to dance. It. Yeah, I mean, it's good. I like yeah, it. Beautiful. The, the, the way they're yeah, synchronized is really impressive. They've obviously you. worked on this routine. It's just synergy, man. I it's dislocated neat. my knee about 15 minutes ago, and it, that thing is just flailing around. It's, He's you, got I think you're doing it the best because of that, actually. Yeah, right. I, I'm, like, I'm feeling no pain because of all this crazy, crazy gravy water that I've been drinking. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. I'm mixing it up over here. <laughs> one, 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 who, needs, who needs gravy water? Gravy water? Gravy pour, water? Gravy water? Gravy water? Pour, here you go. Get down. Get down. Get down. There you go. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it Cartoon. Ooh. Uh, Angela, you want some of this back there? Uh, you... What does she got? A she got, she got a game going on here. Okay. Oh shit! Okay, well, fine. private game, private ooh, game. Ooh, ooh. Okay, uh, she's dealing. She's dealing. And she's doing it seriously. I got some dramatic music for have you. Guys noticed, meows and stuff. Right have there, you noticed what's like, going on over at that table? Yeah, no, a bunch of cats. A bunch of cats, man. Yep, look at these cool cats. A bunch of well-to-do. Cat. They look like they're they're aero vests. Uh, yeah, they're well dressed. Collars. Yeah. They're, they're, they're some good looking cats Like man. really nice shoes Like mini little Italian leather shoes Right yeah. And they're making eye contact None of this like Fucking yeah. shine away shit Like they're looking at you Like, like even up? like dropping down The spectacles across, yeah. Like a pin's Did you hear looking that? Looking over it They're like ta- They're talking to one another They're very vocal Yeah Which is very rare Because cats usually Don't meow at one another Did you know that? Did For you sure? know that? Uh of no Of course I did I don't I don't have what? cats I actually don't know if they're playing except for just batting the dice around. But yeah. <laughs> they're, they're having a great time at it, though. But someone's going to win. So it's, it's like it's almost like they're playing craps at Texas Hold'em. They're just throwing dice around. Throwing dice with the cards. You, do you yeah. need dice for Texas Hold'em? Like some sort of weird feline combo. And they know. keep on knocking the glasses off the table constantly. That just but they are, the, 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 the amount of money exchange seems to be sort of a constant, right? Like, there is money being exchanged. Right. Which is don't, I don't understand the denominations or it's, why. It's total mayhem, guys. I really don't know what's going on here. So There's also that, several um, dead animals on the table, yeah, too. Yeah, is that yeah. rat's tails like, that they're Well, I mean, that's just booty, Lots of really. lizards. Jesus Christ. Um, that one over there is just mutilating that cockroach for no reason. So, and you yeah. can smell a lot of catnip in the air. A yeah, lot of catnip there's a lot of air. nip going on. <laughs> really. A lot of artisanal bags of milks being passed around. Well, hell, you know, not a care in the world here, man. I was going to say, just, I'm doing good. The best uh, part of this, yeah, it's on, it's on the hush hush from Uncle Sam, right? Yeah, like we yeah, got, yeah. We're in here. We're enjoying our gravy water. We're enjoying our Charleston, and, yep. and, and our nothing bad gambling. will ever go wrong. Man nothing Daddy, bad will ever happen. Man, Daddy yes, over sir. here is our uh, bartender. Thank you for saying, sir. By the way, I'm just over here tinkling at the piano, but I see you over there chipping on the ice. Oh yeah, just trying to get us all the ice to get these uh, gravy waters nice and cool in this hot summer you know, day. It. You just gotta have it nice when you're hanging Working out. Working up a sweat. Yeah. Thank you so much, by the way, for uh, giving us these great gravy shine cocktails. Oh, Beautiful, it's good stuff. So uh, good, uh, handmade, clear. handmade. Right, like he clarified right. a gravy water. It's pure. It's, it's, almost, pure. it's it's so clean. It's got yeah. a clean finish. It's like the hash of gravy water. It's just pure. <laughs> oh, drama now over at uh, Angela's Ooh. table. The oh. Two, uh, it looks like a calico cat, and what's the other one with the, the eye patch? What's uh, that's that cat a, called? Well, it's just that's just a black cat. You can say that. Okay, they're okay with that. Yeah. There's not a lot of here at stake aside from just they just want to claim things. Maybe you should use real dice instead of the big fluffy like ones that you hang from like the rear room. They would well, easier I also, to see. Like, kind of put catnip all over that. Dog. Uh, uh, so, maybe that's why they're so excited. Yeah, you can't really train them to do tricks, can you? No, you can. Cats can totally be trained. Oh yeah, I don't know. Unauthorized, Unauthorized cat minute. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, we just flown it all out, man. Letting it all hang out here. This, this is the way we need to do it, man. This, this is, is the way it is. About. I mean, I mean, like cat, cats life. are. I mean, who does? Whoa! The hell is oh. that? Did you guys on? invite anyone? Ask him if he the, knows the password or her. It's or, the fuzz. You know, I'm not going to assume the gender of that knock. What's the password? Social security number. No, that's not it. I'll give you two more tries. Don't give him any more tries. Just make him go away. No, that's not it either. Do you, Angela, please. I think I have this. Absolutely, no, mother's maiden name. That's not right. I'll give you one more try. One more try. High school mascot. Mother's maiden name. Uh, uh, hi, okay. High school mascot. Mother's maiden name. Guys, I got it. That was the best. Dude, don't oh, let him. Who is it, bitch, dude? Who is it? Try. All right. Okay. All right. Come on. Hey. Oh, great. 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 Great.
cloven hoof clattering around. Clogging all over our freedom. Wait, they're satanic? satanic? Oh, those are different. The cats yeah, are upset. No, they don't like hoofs. Oh, no. Who doesn't? No, they can just, just kick them in the face. Hoofs step on kitty cats. Yep. Uh, why is this happening? What did we do? What did we do? What did we do? What do you guys want to do? Even? Engraving? What is that? What is that? What is he giving you like a little warrant? Is that a warrant? It's a... It's a... You know guy? you can't read. He can't read. Take it from him. He can't he read. He only knows his uncle's He's just moving his, his mouth and making noises again. He just says his name. He's looking at the back of it. He's, he's looking he's, at me while he's doing this right now. Like, what? The <laughs> 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 right. so jig is up, obviously. That's what the hoofs say. I don't know. I don't know what this says. It's very long. This is like hundreds of pages. It says it's two it's pages. Two. It's, it's tax evasion, wrongful engraving. That's what we're getting busted for. Wrongful engraving? Damn. Wait, what? Oh, well, guys, I guess this one's on me. I did. I, I knew this was totally illegal, and I did it anyway uh, because the product was so kicking. I mean, I just have to say, you, you have to admit, it was good. It was good. It was I mean, it. it was good, I did, and I didn't question. I didn't think to question. It seems like I was dancing with Nick, and there yeah. was yeah. Uh, piano music. Yeah, you're Damn, on a fucking skirt. cops came in. Son of a bitch. Well, guys, hoof, I just got uh, done talking ass. with the lead, um, the, ass. the lead detective. It looks like um, they could arrest all of us right now. Like this is like like this is serious, uh, so it's something that we need to uh, consider. Like, are we going to jail? Like, should we all just like make a break for it? Like, or, or like go out in a blaze of glory? Like, like you'll it. never take me alive, you damn hoofer, and not like a tap dancer. We are all under arrest. Should we maybe lure them to the library first? Ooh, ooh. I, yeah. I, let, let's. Hey, would, hey, officer, would you like to read a book? Don't listen to him, officer. To look up listen, the judicial shut code. The fuck up. Wait, Jesus. do I throw okay. a cat at their face? Stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, do, do, listen, that, do that. No, do that. Do that. We need to let law do its law stuff. Okay, I didn't expect yeah, this. Yeah, this sucks, dude. Man. Fantastic. This sucks for its bank. Great. Thanks, Thank man. you. Here we are in the back of a freaking bus. We're chained up. Way Angela, to go. you're the one saying you're going to throw a goddamn cat at their faces. How would that be any better? We you wouldn't be in a bus say. with chains on our feet. Uh, going you are going to get a sent to the fucking hole as soon as we get to prison. Chill out. Sit down. Relax. We're I'm going to be someone's bitch. Bus. Wait a minute. I'm going to be someone's bitch. Wait, wait. I'm going to be someone's bitch in prison. Do I get to go to the same prison as you guys? I don't know. I have no idea. We don't know what's going on. I don't want to get separated. That'll suck. This is all bullshit. Bullshit. Okay, this is all bullshit. Thank they can't you. come in here. No. They can't take our rights. I can make as much gravy as I want. I'm going to fuck about the Federal Reserve. It's all our rights. Yeah, you heard that, bus driver? It's yeah. bullshit. Fuck the Federal Reserve, and, uh, this dog. This is America, and we need to stop printing money the way we are and devaluating the dollar. You God cunt. damn it. All right, rear it back. Wait, what does wait. that all mean? Okay, yeah, listen, sorry. ultimately it breaks down. We need to get these fucking bankers and these CEO motherfuckers. Yeah. The presidents. Oh, yeah. Senators. Definitely. Postmen. Mm-hmm. What are you, the dudes that bag your shit. What the are you public. fucking talking about? We How need to get them in a room. The people with power. The yes. people who have the power. Did we you need say to get bag them. your groceries? Get we them. need to get the people get in them. power in a room. They're the ones. And we need to teach them about the proletariat. Okay. And we need to teach them about Marx. And Ooh. we need to teach them about Lenin. Okay. And the official... The, the, the way the world is going, we need to teach them about communism and how they need now. to. Coming from a guy, we who need to re-educate them. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, guys. okay, dude. Fuck you. Okay, you at gunpoint. No, 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 no. Okay, look, I was with you like all the way up to the communism re-education shit. Okay, what's that, wrong with that? That's that. That's a little scary. That's a little too far. That kind of creeps me out a little bit. Yeah, communism is not going to get these manacles off my hands, off me. Manos. If we make them do their homework by gunpoint, it will. No, it's not going to work that way, and and it actually could go really, really wrong if you're not careful. Have any of you heard of the Potesti prison experiment? No, but I know that we're no. going to go to prison now. So, well, uh, well, well tell me all about my future we've got existence. Time. If this is you know, your future existence, uh, let's just say I hope you ate before we left. Warning, warning! This story involves feces, lots and lots of feces. They you were, were the one that focused on the feces. You didn't have to focus so much on the feces. That's all there was. No, there was, there was plenty a lot of, of fe- other there non-feces was all feces. related things. There was things. all feces. You focused on the feces. I went. I read like 12 articles, and it was poop upon poop <laughs> upon poop. I don't know where. You had, you had to dig to find non-poop, okay? You found the corn in the poop. I was stuck with just the poop. We've all seen prison movies and TV shows. From the horrors of the show Oz to the redemption tale of Shawshank. We've been shown the darkness of the American prison system. However, all of that is a fucking cakewalk when compared to the Potesti prison experiment. Taking place in Romania between 1949 and 1951, 
The Patessi experiment was described as, quote, the most terrible act of barbarism in the contemporary world. The goal was to take young dissidents of the new communist regime, mostly members of the ultra-nationalist Iron Guard, and re-educate them. Kaz, to re-educate them. And they're like ultra-nationalists. They probably got to be re-educated in at least some respect. Right? The Patetsi experiment also sounds like a new age jazz band. And they're really yeah, good. Yeah. They're really good. They 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 experiment like they a little bit, but metal. they keep it to the roots. Right, exactly. Heavy but now they're doing synth. jazz, like a quintet. Now, one of the main figures in the experiment was one Eugen Turkanu. Yeah, I'm going to keep it that Turkanu. I like it. A former member of the Iron Guard, and that right there was one of the main tools in the toolbox: turning people against each other. Often. The prisoners would go through re-education only to become torturers themselves. Now, Turkinu started a group called the ODCC, or the Organization of Convinced Communist Detainees, to carry out the re-education of the youth. So basically, he was a prisoner. They got him. They beat him into submission to enough where he's like, hey, I got an idea. Let's do what you did to me, but on a bigger scale to a lot more people. And so there were several stages of the process. First, the detainees were subject to constant and severe beatings. They were also taken in and forced to watch hours and hours of lectures about communism, about Stalin, to re-educate them. And they were also forced to torture each other in an attempt to discourage past loyalties. Each prisoner was subject to extreme interrogation. They were coerced into exposing every single dark detail of their lives. They called this unmasking. They'd get to the point where they would just start making up past crimes. They would just start making up things just to appease the torturers. Now, the next phase was internal unmasking, where inmates were forced to reveal the names of other uh, detainees who were weak or not following protocol. Like, they were told to beat each other. Oh. And if Ryan wasn't beating everyone as hard as he could... You were forced to out Ryan as, hey, you know, Ryan really didn't beat me well today, you know? He's, Pussy. He's, oh, wow. Yeah, and so mm. even if you try to lay back when it comes to torturing your uh, your fellow inmates, they doubt you for that. That bet you can't even beat up your pillow. Yeah, just a bunch of prisoners beating each other off. Up, up, <laughs> up. Oh, up. Uh, well. Yeah, you're thinking Oz again. Totally different. Uh, nice. I want to go there. Then came the public moral unmasking through the use of public humiliation. Inmates were forced to denounce all their beliefs, loyalties, and values. Religious men were made to blaspheme their religious texts and symbols. For instance, Jesus Christ. on Christmas Day... That's that's a hard sell. Oh. Like, again, back to Kaz's, like, how can you be in a cult? Like, I'm trying to get, even get a raise. Like, these guys are made to go against their religion? Well, I mean, they're a prison. They've been captured by these people. They're being And being beaten on a yeah. daily basis. On Christmas Day, a Christian prisoner was forced to defecate on a bedpan. Not in it, on on it. it, To symbolize the nativity, while other prisoners were forced to kneel and cross themselves before it, and prison guards would dress up as priests and say sacraments while they were bowing and praying to the turd. Isn't that like a cradle of filth video? Basically. Basically. What What does that have anything to do with that? Just saying that your they're God is shit. Religion, right. Right. Your Jesus is shit, yeah, is what they're saying. Even prison guards would have to do that? Like people who are. No, the guards are the guards who dress up as priests <laughs> oh. and to complete the scene. Oh. <laughs> so, what, like, it, I guess it depends upon how much they were into it, right? Like, does your manager show up and go, okay, today, put on the priest uniform, you gotta pray to the piece of shit? The dude's like, dude, I'm here for prison duty. Like, I'm not. I don't want Last time, Gary, you really were phoning it in. Uh, right. I didn't believe you at all. I'm not buying into the stupid re education bullshit. Like, I just wanna make sure they get, you know, stay in their cells. What, <laughs> what year was uh, it was between the years uh, 49 and 51. Hmm. So only Good two years. years, but that's yeah. still pretty intense. And that was the best thing they got to do with poop oh, right there. Okay. <laughs> because these torturers were I'm making really, six bucks an hour, dude. These guys were really into poop. They were really into the poop. The Christian baptism was mocked as guards chanted oh, yeah. baptismal rites as they dumped buckets of urine and feces on the inmates. Oh. Or, if that was ineffective, the inmates would have their heads thrust into the buckets of feces and urine and held there until bubbles appeared. Misguided Halloween party. Then they would pull them out, let them get a breath, and shove their head back into the poop bucket. One inmate had this done so often that he developed an automatic reflex that lasted two months. 
Every morning he would awake and go and plunge his own head into a feces bucket, much to the amusement of the re-educators. He was probably trying to, like, what's it called? Psych yourself up? <laughs> Build up a tolerance? <laughs> it's right into the bucket. It was just obviously like, in my reps, man. Like, rampant every day. pink eye weird. that he was getting. Oh. Yeah, weird rocky It was more, it was more like the like, ruby or... red eye or just crimson eye at that ruby. point. Uh, so, you know, the eyes just basically fall the fuck out of your head at this point. Vermilion eye. <laughs> nice. Nicely done. That could be the word of the week. Now, the re-education would also involve working till exhaustion, doing hum- humiliating tasks, such as cleaning an entire floor with a rag clenched between your teeth. Wow. But back to the poop. Here's a little excerpt of an inmate describing the particulars of re-education. Quote, You were made to tug each other's genitals, or one of them would put his penis in your mouth. If you soiled yourself during beatings, you were made to eat your own feces and to lick the dirty long johns or to eat another's feces from your own mess tin without being allowed to wash it after that. This is so specific and like coprophilia to the totally very like you get a syllabus when you walk in a gym. (laughs) Don't I like tell you what the rules are? Just has the word poop in it. Just open it up and just this is the pages of poop. Poop rules. And like then, the the torture budget for this prison was about five dollars. Yeah, yeah. Look, we, we gotta, gotta, do, we gotta, gotta be, stretch the poop thing we gotta, a long way. We're gonna be super creative with this, boys. <laughs> and some guy said, "I got an idea. Are we feeding him? Yes, poop." I guess he kind of saved on water though, since like no one's pooping in a toilet; they're all eating yeah. it. So That's it's true. Just it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, to continue the quote, we were made to kiss each other's bottoms. You were made to urinate in each other's mouths <laughs> when you begged for water. You would be given urine from a bucket, or they would urinate directly in your mouth, or others would spit in your mouth. You were made to spit in each other's bottoms and then lick it up, then would wipe a stick smeared in feces from the water closet on your mouth or in your mouth. You're also made to stick your finger up your bottom and then suck it. That's, <laughs> that's how the quote ended. I did not read it. any of that. Dude, are you just, sure this is a thing? You can so. hear the smile on your face as you read this. <laughs> Dude, I found that quote in multiple places. Holy shit, that I is found it. You were made to stick your finger up your bottom and then suck it. It's like a kindergartner got sent to this prison. It was so vivid, yeah. <laughs> was. Holy shit. Instead of, you know, like taking one word and trying not to repeat it, they heavy handed that motherfucker hard. Add to all of this constant and horrible physical torture. Beatings on the head to induce stupefaction. Beatings in the face for disfigurement. Thousands of blows to the back, below the ribs, the plexus, the soles of the feet. The final stage was the total unmasking, where prisoners were made to denounce their entire past life. Their friends, their family, their past leaders were all now criminals and grotesque. This is the point that a successful candidate went from being the tortured to the torturer. In all... The number of people processed ranged from either 1,000 to 5,000 people went through this ridiculous program. They just, Of course, they didn't keep really accurate records because it's crimes against humanity. In the end, the ODCC finally faced trial for their program, and Turkanu was held responsible for the murder of 30 prisoners and the abuse of 780 others and sentenced to death. So that's a definite serial killer Criteria, Basically, yeah, but more institutionalized. Right, right. However, the officials that oversaw the prison, because remember, he was just technically an inmate, were given light sentences and later released. What is that called when you follow blindly orders? Perfect. Uh, it's Nuremberg defense. Nuremberg defense, yep. The court eventually ruled that the experiment was actually due to the infiltration of Americans and former Iron Guard members to discredit Romanian law enforcement. So it was all fake news, basically. They said that, oh, we didn't do this. The Americans came in and created, made all this torture just to discredit us. Right. it's, It's just really crazy when you go back in history and it's always the victors write the story. That's all it is. Because we're obviously going to come out uh, on the right side of history here. Can we we kind of come up with something? Like, like what's our... Like, obviously, we're going to be sent to different holding cells and interviewed and interrogated. What's the story? I don't do do very well. Okay. I'm just saying, I don't do do. No do do for you two? No do do for this guy. Do do. Just don't say anything. Cass, please. The plan is very simple. 
Don't talk to the hoof. Don't talk to the hoof. No, I thought Don't the plan tell was anything. flip immediately on all you fuckers. The hoof are friends. They every day they they, got they what. They what? got him. They try to make oh, our lives easier. No. Oh, man. He's oh. already... Drink the Kool-Aid. He's, yeah, he's, what? he's, he's, he's drowning like, in the Kool-Aid. Make easier. This will all work itself out. Oh. Really? Really? Look at your feet. Look at the shackles. Look at the bus. Look at the dusty highway. You really think this is going to work out good? That day started like so many other days. I got out of bed and put my pants on. However, it would end like one of those rare nightmares you hoped you woke up from. That was not to be the case. As Kaz played a forlorn harmonica melody, I thought, why can't I make prison wine? I hear so much about it. The furious scraping and chipping sounds in the background of of Man Daddy doing his spoken word blues thing and and me just trying to get Angela to talk to me about anything. Angela! 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 Shut up! Tell me if guards are coming. Angela. Shut up. Guards, 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 guards. Are guards actually coming? Yeah. They are. There's no guards up. Oh, my God. Do you just want attention? Angela, how do you make prison wine? I'm not telling you that. Can you just tell me if guards are coming? Please tell me, please. Bruno. Shut up, Nick Spry. It's Bruno. Prison Angela, wine. shut up, Nick Spry. Prison wine's called Bruno. Angela, how do you make prison wine? To make prison wine. It's called Prince. It's called Pruno. Mm, Again, prison so long. you're not helping me. Mm, been in the prison so long. The guards are right around the corner right now. Oh, 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 guards, 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 guards. They're Dude. about three feet away. You should shut up right now. Ain't nothing but a day in the prison. Please don't make a seat of poop. Another day in the prison and the right, coast is clear. Okay. The coast is clear. I got this. Mm. Angela. What? Angela. What? How do you make prison wine? I don't know how to make prison wine. It's called prison. For Christ's sake, can everybody hear me? Guys? Yes, I can hear you. Are you sure? Because it, like, it's hard to hear from inside this box. Hmm? You're in box? a box? Duh. God, wait, you guys aren't in boxes? No, I'm not in a goddamn box. This place is box. luxurious. It's bigger than mean? my bedroom. Wait, whoa, whoa, it's man, nice. Man, man, what do you mean? Are like you a, in like a, a fucking box? I mean, no, it's box. like a racquetball court in here. It's awesome. I am literally speaking, putting my, like, put, Daffy Duck putting my lips through this little hole cut and it's from the side of the box. You guys aren't in fucking boxes? No. Angela. Why would we be in fucking boxes? Angela. What? How do you make prison wine? I don't know how to make prison wine. It is called Bruno, for Christ's sake. Yeah, thank you. Learn the terminology. Where are you? Mm. It sounds like you're in a box. I'm pretty damn sure that you are sitting right on top of me. It's creaking something awful. Oh, ah! my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> is it boxed wine? No. Mm. I can only wish. Guys, this is... I am... Ugh. Obviously, I'm freaking out a little bit because I'm inside of a box. Yeah, that's. I, right. mean, I mean, you've yeah. been in. This is not the first time you've been in a box. Okay, cozy though, cozy at least though. this time you're a human. But that, this is the first time I've been inside of a box inside of prison. Yes, it's like a box in a box. That right. the, the first time that the hoof, the, the, the GD hoof, has put me inside you're of a box. You're digging that terminology, Archie. You're really digging calling yes. it a hoof. Hey, guards, uh, Angela, guards. Guards. Oh, mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing bad going on here. Just a friend sitting in a box. Evening. Mm-hmm. Mm, please don't make us eat a poop. Mm-hmm. And clear. Anyway, Nick in a box. He's the Nick in a box. Sorry, it's just too easy. That was pretty funny. Thank you. Guys, I don't know how much longer I can last in here. It's getting tough to breathe. Getting a little claustrophobic. Have you guys yeah, have you baby. You ever even heard of a Mongolian box prison? No. I- oh, I've heard of a lot of Mongolian things, but not that one. What is it? <laughs> so, uh, immurement is this. This word well, is translated. You sound a lot better now. Yeah, you know, out in the open. <laughs> Stretch your lungs and your lips. Red leather, yellow leather. Uh, so this is translated from Latin as work as literally uh, walling in. I am the root in or inside of, and murus, M-U-R-U-S, is wall. So literally walling in from Latin. Uh, This refers to the practice of imprisoning a person within a space with no exits, typically a small enclosed space. It is also common for the term of imprisonment to be for life, and the uh, practice usually shortens said life. 
In fact, it can be a form of a death sentence with instances of execution involving immurement only as a means to hasten dehydration, starvation, or asphyxiation in a particularly cruel and creative manner. Because those always take too long. You know, he's like, we speed this up somehow. Been starving this guy for so long, we put him in a box or something? Well, you're probably going to, it's going to take a lot longer for you to dehydrate like walking around than, yeah, but, than to be inside of a box. Yeah, but also like the bottom of the box gets hot. Yeah. So every, everywhere you go, it's like a skillet. Like a lethal easy bake oven. <laughs> <laughs> so as well as being a rather heinous form of capital punishment that arose independently in vastly different cultures throughout history, its appearance in myths and lore and in modern literature is absolutely undeniable. Uh, it may not be the first idea that comes to your mind when you hear the words human sacrifice, quote unquote, mm-hmm. uh, when those are mentioned. But don't think for a single minute that humankind couldn't possibly be that fucked up because we are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we're horrible. Yeah. We're horrible people. There is evidence to That's prove funny. this with uh, human remains. Uh, so such ritualistic uh, practices seem common in the burial rites of figures of authority in ancient cultures, uh, like way back, like way, way, way back. back. So think of the Egyptians, who's the, the pharaohs. They were interred with their still living servants in the Great Pyramids of old, and so much so that their relationship of master and servant could continue on into the next life in the land of Osiris. What a shitty... You already got a shitty job, and now you get to be... Okay, well, uh, the boss is dead, so we get to go home? Oh, no, we're going to bury you alive with him. Oh, okay, that wasn't in the contract. Get in the box. Uh, So this rite is also found in the Sumerian city of Ur. That's U-R, and this dates back as far as 2500 B.C., Uh, Ironically enough, uh, as you were saying earlier, archaeologists uh, and anthropologists hold the common theory that these attendants were most likely drugged before (laughs) they were interred. At least that. So they had the the, the complete guarantee of, quote-unquote, cooperation because <laughs> I mean is that is that what that's called yeah, it yeah. is it is okay. maybe it was just like a quick like you want to smoke a bowl before you go into like the tomb for eternity like alright sure yeah. Yeah. thank Even, you man you've always been my best like, friend like exactly quick fist bump like do I get a jar of honey too no <laughs> right. alright then you wake up in just total darkness and you go <laughs> oh my life I'm so worried this sucks <laughs> like, cause even like the most devoted servant, like Alfred Pennyweather Jeeves Benson, <laughs> is gonna take a second thought when he's like, "Well, you know, I might have a little misgivings about, <laughs> I don't know about this. spending my last precious moments inside my boss's tomb." Yep. Instances also appear in China, Africa, and all the way across the globe in the Incan civilization of so Peru. Everyone thought this was a great idea, right. and these all all the same cultures had this idea independent of one another. It, was, it wasn't like you know I heard that the Romans were doing something pretty cool with walling and servants. <laughs> Maybe we want to try that next fall. It's setting the new trend. That is ridiculous. So, yeah. so people went to another country they've never been before, meet names they've never, never met before. They're trying to find commonalities. Like, wait, you put people in boxes? We totally put people in boxes, too. That's right. fucking crazy. I can't believe you guys do that. Yeah, but we did it first. No, no, no. We did We did it better, though. Like, look look at these boxes. We these are the fine. the whole brick wall up in front of them. Yeah, like, it's crazy. What's going on here, bitch man. Ass box. Our boxes are better than yours. Boom. They're smaller. You guys put them in boxes? <laughs> That's barbaric. <laughs> <laughs> at least we walled them in, like... Civilized people. And then the barbarians go, thank you. <laughs> now, as a form of punishment, uh, immurement shows up as a common thread in regards to certain religious castes that have somehow violated or broken their sworn or solemn vows. Uh, we see this with the Vestal Virgins of Rome with quite detailed and specified practices. So the, the Vestal Virgins of Rome, these priestesses, they dedicated their lives to keeping a light a sacred flame in the temple of Vesta. <laughs> Vesta was the Roman goddess of the home and the family, with the flame it probably being sort of representative of the fire of the hearth, the centerpiece of the family home. Yeah, uh, Vesta in Rome was Hestia in Greek. Correct. How would you know? So their purity yes. <laughs> was history, was embodied with a sacred and very strict vow of celibacy and chastity. So punishment for any sort of sexy time for these Vestal virgins was, of course... Being immured alive. Get the box. Right. Oh my Jeez. God. Well, Jesus. You lose your Christ. status as vestal virgin once you have a little bit of sexy time. Well, I guess it depends. Okay, right? so like you who's... joke about that, but apparently, like the threat. Never mind. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. You heartless, cruel Terrible. son of a bitch. This is an impressive little fact. So uh, apparently, the threat 
of of having your proper burial rites of or entombment being taken away from you as a vestal virgin, like the the promise of going to the land of the gods or Mount Olympus or I, I, I don't know, it's my Roman afterlife is a little shady. I don't know that. I guess the threat of being that having taken away from you such a deterrent that. In the existence of the Order of the Vestal Virgins, which existed for over a thousand years, there are only ten purported cases of this discipline being applied. Only ten only naughty ten Vestal Virgins? in over a thousand years. That's pretty impressive. Wow. Either Holy that or shit. they were really good at hiding it. They are denying people just the one of the most basic human instincts is sex. If these Vestal Virgins were found guilty of such a violation, they were... Immured, uh, yeah. but with with a sort of decadent procession, like r- definitely, th- like this is a highly <laughs> highly ritualized uh, punishment to the fact that they were basically a, a normal funeral ceremony was performed that they were escorted to a litter, like in, in shrouded litter, and carried upon the backs of men uh, across the forum in front of their own loved ones as <laughs> witnesses to a pit that had been dug down in the earth, and in this pit was a small cell. Small enough that it was basically a tomb, but large enough that it fit perhaps a small couch, a table, which they would put a little bit of food and a, an oil lamp. All right. Uh, okay. That doesn't sound too bad. Well, like, like, a we're talking. Suite. like a little apartment. Right. Yeah. Sounds rather cozy and hobbit holish until Cable? they would put the virgin, not anymore virgin, down into the hole and then close it off and put earth on top of it, sealing it from the rest of the world. No cable. No cable? No, no, no cable. No. No cable. No. Never mind. No cable, no Wi Fi. So once this prison was was buried, basically, uh, they forced the people to leave. No rites were performed. No words of holiness were were spoken, except for a small prayer silently said by the head priest. Is he saying the prayer? No, he's like going over his grocery list. What an ultimate fuck off, though. Persona non grata. Yep. They don't even mention it. You're erased. Jesus Christ. You're erased. No, not Jesus Christ. Before Jesus Christ. (laughs) So, but this practice in relation to Jesus Christ also appears heavily over centuries uh, in the Catholic faith as a punishment for in the monastic sense against monks and nuns who would violate their vows of celibacy or uh, profess heretical views or be found guilty of heresy. Uh, and this sort of brought to mind when I saw certain etchings of it, like the Edgar Allan Poe story, the Cask of Amontillado, like oh, literally such a good yeah. story. people just getting walled in brick and mortar style. And taking it because of their faith. I, that, that's where faith confuses me. I mean, I, I'm impressed by people with that sort of faith. That they want someone dead with them? Yeah. It's like maybe the the dead want company, but then you're murdering someone. <laughs> so when they do show up in the afterlife, they're going to be like, dude, that was a really dick move. That was a really dick move. I had kids at home, and you were already dead, and you, now I'm in the afterlife with you, dick. Like, hey, don't, Jerry, don't talk to me! <laughs> <laughs> Are you still mad about that? Yeah! yeah. Uh, so <laughs> when when this judgment was passed down upon monks and nuns, uh, this was preceded. And I'm reading according to Wikipedia here. Wikipedia, Wikipedia here. Uh, so Friend of the show said that these actions were preceded by the phrase "quote vade in pacem," which instead of "go in peace," which is sort of a traditional um, Christian coming and going, go in peace, wish you in peace, like. I come in peace, that bad Dolph Lundgren movie. Like a missionary. Uh, that was not a bad Dolph Lundgren. I can't yeah. believe you even referenced that. You know about that? Yeah, I know about that. Oh, my God. With We're going to bro out over the that The killer, later. like, DVDs that he shot. It was so yeah. good. Uh, so, Vade and Pacha means literally go into peace. Go into the earth. Go into peace. Go, go to sleep. <laughs> but the punishment is not limited to ascetics or religious orders alone. The sentence of immurement has also been carried out against secular criminal acts the world over. To boot, in Greece, Italy, Russia... England, China, Eastern Europe, and many, many more. Uh, so one that, I don't know, this is sort of a dark giggle that I had doing research for this story, was the pederasts in the prolactrum. Uh, okay, so like child molesters? Yes, uh, pederasty is considered the crime of men performing basically homosexual rape against little boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Yikes. The prolactrum is a famous tower in the city of Augsburg in Bavaria, Germany, in the center of town. Yep. So this occurred in the 15th century, in 1409, early 15th century, that there were basically pedophiles found guilty of this act, and they were immured in wooden boxes and hung inside of the prolactrum, this tower, until they starved to death. Always, Ooh. like, elaborate, thought-out 
Yeah, that's execution. They and really plot. put the work into it. They really do. Just like hang them, <laughs> chop the head off. It's sort of like the Weird. FDR New Deal. They're just creating jobs. Yeah, people. I just think the same yeah. thing. There's yeah. people doing that job. Like, like we don't need stronger it, chain right. hooks from the roof. These dudes yeah. are getting heavy. And right. they're the, they probably think the the weird contractors. stuff too. They're like, hey, but you know what? Boxes are good, but. We could make thicker boxes. They get hotter. A thicker box, hotter box. Wait, what do you think? It's only a 30% more. Box a self-contained like, right. heating element. So another famous instance of immurement as a criminal punishment actually has to do with a famous character that we've discussed on the show before. That is the Lady Bathory. Yes. Mm, yeah. Yes. She met her untimely end after killing, murdering and bathing in the blood of numerous servant girls by being immured, balled up and, oh, yeah. and locked away. She earned it. You got to say, when it comes to this. She earned her time in there. Uh, but perhaps out of all the research that I did, the most disturbing and brutal of such sentences occurs and was found up uh, occurring until the very early to mid 20th century in Mongolia in Asia. There is a photo of this. It's a very famous photo that was taken in 1913, 1914 by um, Albert Kahn. That's K-A-H-N. He was a French millionaire banker uh, that sort of revolutionized the development of color photography that he was using techniques by the Lumiere brothers who were big in film in the late 19th century but there's this horrible horrible photo of one of these Mongolian boxes that prisoners were kept in and these things are basically have enough room in this photo you can see a woman's face and her arm coming out of the box it looks it appears um, so there is it, it's horrible it's it's like a it's like a coffin basically like a you couldn't even fit a big amp in it. Yeah, yeah. If you wanted to, a, l- a little bit, <laughs> that's like, you know, like a combo. Is. If you want to jam a little, a little Bluetooth speaker. There you go. T- to give a little bit more of an accurate account, there was a visit in 1918 by uh, Roy Chapman Andrews uh, as he visited the town of Urga in Mongolia. He visited one of their jails, and he recounts that he saw prisoners being encapsulated in a three foot by four foot wooden box. That were kept in subterranean cells Whoa. or dungeons, as he referred to them. Wow. Uh, and he said even approaching the prison, that it was unusual for outsiders to be brought inside. Uh, so these these prisons were made of almost entirely of wood, wood and stone, and they were surrounded by 15 to 20 foot pikes surrounding the outside of it. So think what you would maybe envision as like an old west fort defending the frontier in Ameri- in the Americas, just logs sawed off and sharpened to like. A Dixon Ticonderoga point on the end, and then slammed into the ground, just surrounding this entire prison, like a long uh, barbecue, like skewer, skewer, basically. And that was a fence surra- closing off this prison from the rest of the world. Uh, and once they were brought inside, they were brought down five to six feet below the ground, and they found scores of these boxes, some stacked upon one another, and that these boxes, these three to four foot, three to three by four foot dimensioned boxes, uh, gave prisoners no room to stand. That is- Really, That's small. really fucking small. Yeah. Nor any room to sit upright, and they were handcuffed simultaneously as oh. well. Oh. They only had a six-inch opening that served as a source of ventilation and as a means to convey food and water, which wasn't always given. And that these coffins were only cleared of their human waste once every two to three weeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, I had that question, and now I know it, and so I wish I didn't. poop in these a lot stories. Of poop, a lot of poop. <laughs> Also, in the city of Ram, man, in in the region of Urga, uh, in Mongolia, during the winters, the temperatures would get so low that it was very commonplace for prisoners to freeze from sub zero temperatures. Just like to die, right? And which sounds probably better than living at that point. Say that the lucky prisoner was was able to somehow survive these conditions. Uh, Their immobilization would eventually lead to the atrophy of their muscles, basically paralyzing them. How long were they in yeah. these boxes? Did it vary? It did vary. Okay. Weeks or no. months? No. Oh, God, like, no. If you were, pretty much you were there for life. Oh, oh my God. God. Then just die. Wow. Yes. That, even... I would just stop eating food and just let myself die at that point. Why would you consider continuing on? Yeah, like spinal, like the spinal column would start to just form, yeah, would just seize over. You'd be a jellyfish. So... Yeah. Perhaps even a more accurate and brutal description of, oh, of this same area, Urga, the, the same punishment being performed comes from chapter 15 of the book, A Tale of a Tour in Mongolia. This was originally published in 1920. And the following are several selected excerpts, courtesy of the website oldandsold.com. Mm. 
Passing on to the interior, we came upon a heavy wooden chest, some 4 to 41 feet long by 2 feet deep, iron bound and secured by two strong padlocks. To our horror, we discovered that it contained a man one might have imagined that a wild beast to be sent by train was temporarily imprisoned therein. But a man, the hole in the side was sufficient size to enable the prisoner to thrust out his manacled hands. This also provided the sole means of ventilation. But this unfortunate creature was well off compared with the others we saw subsequently. At least he was breathing in the open air. The dungeons, we were told, were so full that this prisoner had to remain outside. While we were discussing his pitiable lot, clank clank with the great bars and bolts, and the jailer, spelled G-A-O-L-E-R, had opened the double doors leading into the first dungeon. There must have been 20 to 30 coffins in this, and some piled on tops of the others, and the atmosphere was absolutely putrid. The two Mongol officials, whose general tone I cannot say impressed us very favorably, now very ostentatiously, held their long sleeves over their noses, accustomed to smells though they were. One imagines that there may have been some means of cleaning out the coffins from underneath, as is the case in some cages in a menagerie, for it was most strongly impressed upon us that never, under any circumstances whatsoever, are the prisoners allowed to come out except for execution, or rarely, to be set free. The majority are in for life sentences. And then skipping ahead, it says... Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. Tiny box. Tiny box with feces two weeks. Elbows hurt. Smell, smell, smell. Why not? Blood, blood, blood. Wishing Why death, not die? Death. Exactly. <laughs> Beside one coffin was a pool of blood which told its own tale. Within it, there was a poor devil coughing his lungs up. The Russian officer, knowing Mongolian well, spoke a few words to one or two of them, but they seemed too dazed to understand. Their minds, like their limbs quickly atrophy in that close confinement. After a breath of fresh air in the tiny space that separates the dungeons, which, by the way, are four or five feet below ground level, another double door was unbarred for us as we entered the second dungeon where there were a similar number of Chinese in the coffins. It struck us as infinitely sad to see these gentle, highly civilized Chinese here, chancy merchants, most of them, friends and neighbors, no doubt of the men with whom we had drunk tea in their charming guild rooms adjoining the little temple in the Mai Mai Cheng. There they were, shut up for the remainder of their lives in heavy, iron-bound coffins, out of which they could never, under any conditions or for any purpose, move. They could not lie down flat. They could not sit upright. They were not only manacled, but chained to the coffins. They saw daylight, but for a few minutes. That is insane. Wow. That is absolutely crazy. Crazy to think about. So... You guys gonna get me out of here or what? We're gonna have it to try. It doesn't sound as bad. It doesn't sound, I mean, that story was bad, but I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look around? as bad looking at it. You seem okay. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been that long. You so can't even see me. I'm trying to like look. Stick your right tongue out. See, look, he's making funny noises. Yeah. He's having a great time yeah. in there. He's, yeah. having, he's so, having a blast. He's having the time. Your of his sense life. of humor has not atrophied. It, I know it's amazing, right? The strength of this guy. Will you at least pour a little pruner through the hole? A little what? A what? What? How many times do I have to tell you prison wine is called Pruno? All right, well, we have to make it. Oh, yeah. And I did it. I'm in. You did what? What? Yep. You did made, what? You made prison wine. That was easy. That was quick. What's was the like gravity? A, a microwave? Totally busted down the freaking wall here. Whoa. What? Yeah. Do you like, are you like Jessica Jones now? What's going on? Bye. Uh, well, that was rude. Was there that not a plan for She just busted out and took off and left us here. to get out? Are we going to have to explain to the guards what happened yeah. to you? Yeah. Are there oh, guards? They're going to blame us. They're gonna play I'm not in that cell. They're going to put us in a box like Nick. Hey, guys, you, no. you don't mind just, like, maybe shoving this box through the hole in the wall? The giant man? You're the only one with an alibi right now. Yeah. the box. Exactly. And He's now already there. we know the answer to the question. What's in the box? It's Nick. You. Nick. It's not as exciting. Yeah, I know. You're right. Sort of an anticlimactic kind I of thing. I don't like it anymore. Right. Like, if they opened the box and Nick was in there, it wouldn't have been as cool. You could always let me out. I think I need to... Reconvene. Um, I think I can make a prison wine. Just give me two minutes. Okay. You're listening to Fort Fritz. Hi. Welcome back to Fort Fritz. We are still incarcerated against our will because of a tyrannical government taking away our right to purify gravy water in the best way possible. And here we sit. It's me, Fritz. Yeah. We got Nick out of the box. We let, let Nick out of the box. Look, it wasn't locked. Yeah, No yeah, brainer. A yeah. doy. You really should have checked that. And and you were in there for only a few hours, but you really filled that thing up, if you know what I'm saying. I'm just, it's like, I really feel bad for the guards that got to clean that out. That's quite, just, quite stinky. Quite, quite stinky. Gotta go. Prison makes you do crazy things. 
Angela, uh, she has just escaped, left us here. Shocker, shocker. The the immortal revenant who has no care for human life just poo sprinted off had a good old time did not teach us how to make any prison wine. There's still an Angela sized hole in this wall. Yeah, it looks like a cartoon. It's like yeah. the exact shape of her. I don't know. How she, it's like a Bugs Bunny thing. But I dare not step through it. She's uh, a rambling now. She's on her own path. And uh, we have no idea where Cass is. Uh, Kaz is just. Yeah, when, did, uh, yeah. when did he? When did he get out? Of here? I have no idea. You think we notice? There's not a lot to watch here. There's oh. no. We're not. You know, we're not getting Hulu, Netflix, anything. Guys, guards are coming. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. Mm-hmm. Cheese at the hoofs. Oh, it's the hoofs. Oh, they're opening up. No one's yeah. buying the hoofs. That's gotta be Kaz. Oh, what the hell? Great jacket on. Oh, but what? More like a cashmere sweater. Yeah. This look, oh, it's pretty look fly, good. Right? You look incredible. Yeah. Shh, shh, shh. Did they give you a facial? Cool. Oh, Kaz, you look like hell. Uh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, to you, too. Leave me in my bed, pigs. I don't care about any of this shit. Okay. Well, oh, still yeah. defiant. Still defiant. That's, That's my Kaz. Wow. Let's, let's, let's help They're, him like, uh, gently uh, placing him on one of the prison uh, cots. Like, very they loving. They Gingerly, I'd they say. They know yeah. better. Brace his head for Christ's sake. Brace his head, you animal! Oh, Jesus Christ. Fluffing his pillow and everything. Look, they tucked them up to his chinny chin. This is actually pretty comfortable. Thank you, boys. Thank Cass, you. do you need cold water? Where'd you get cold water? I, I would have to improvise if he says yes. Just let him say. Do you need cold water? Or? No, I'm good. Oh, thank I'm God. Let me pour water on, on your face. Totally. I just came back from the immersion. Uh, are the guards gone? God, you're not dead. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, gone. they're, they're gone. gone. They're gone. They're gone. They're way gone. Okay. So oh, Eric, he's sitting up now. Yeah, okay. full disclosure. Right, wow, he just perked up. That Jesus was quick. Really got some Hell good... of a recovery there, buddy. I found out how to make prison wine. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Finally. But it doesn't get you drunk. Oh. What? It what? sort of just gives you really bad tummies. Uh, hepatitis. Well, that doesn't sound good at all. Maybe. Mm. We're waiting on the test. It honestly, it could be because the main constituent of my prison wine, as you probably have realized, the only real water in our cells is from the toilet. So mm-hmm. I tried to make it in the toilet. They made me sick, let's yeah, say. I wonder why. That's, yeah, mildly. Yeah. To uh, let's bring in the scientists to figure out this mystery. Well, we'll figure it out. It's fermentation sugars, right? Like, I gotta maybe eat more Captain Crunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all of this all of this makes sense. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, now I got the tummies. I haven't even tried this stuff. Oh, look Just at him. He's doubling over. It. Just thinking Cass, about it. God, keep hurts. it together. What did you see? Let's you must it. have seen something. I saw the inside of the infirmary. Oh, God, I, no, yeah, don't I, say that. I told Fuck the guard I had eyes. the tummies. Initially, it was going to be kind of like, you know, the uh, get out of school kind of thing. I was like, oh, I got the tummies. I need to leave jail. And he told me that's apparently not how it works. They have like a, a thing in here where they take care of you when you have the tummies. Like they took me to the infirmary and uh, they, sh- they, they, they put some stuff on me. Do you see all this stuff on my back? What it's is this? Hideous. Are these? Uh, but I have uh, also this like the stack of uh, patient medical records, and I figured we would pass them down. And, like you guys could take a look, something a little, little uh, you, bedtime where reading. Did you smuggle? Where did you smuggle? I had to smuggle. It was like they put me next to like the filing cabinet. I opened the filing cabinet, and I put the files under the blanket, and then they wheeled me out with it. It's been under your butt. What are you, What are you worried about? Can I see some of these records? Sure. Here you go. Pa- pass them down. You got to pass them down. Though. Like here, we'll just like. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious too. Everyone's gonna get a bottle. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I got several, but uh, uh, yeah, exactly. I, I, okay, there is an obvious difference between one file and the other. That's yeah, all I'm saying. Carefully uh, planned this uh, out. My Bry, eyes are watering a little. That's bit. what is will. Nick Spry, pass him back, back, back to me. <laughs> pass him back so I can randomize him. Okay. Okay. There we go. It's, okay. This guy's first name is Dick. It's funny, right? They like they got funny names, and there's funny like medical shit happening to them. You can just like kind of peruse this. Yeah. You know, like, like cancer. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is pretty funny. This guy died of a broken heart. <laughs> it is funny. You're right. That is funny. Actually, this shit's itching. Like, what is this? Stuff? Look, look at my back. Somebody, look, can you even look at my back? Ugh. How are we positioned right now? Can anyone look yeah, at my back? I think yeah. you look fine. No, that's it looks not good, fine. right? Yeah. No, that's okay. That's it's itching though. Yeah, it's should've... itching like crazy. All right, well, whatever. I'm, not I'm gonna take I'm my saying mind off it with moving. Please. I'm seeing things moving. Please. Scabies. Something. Can you see scabies? No. No, but I can hear something too. You can scabies hear scabies. Don't make, yeah, I can. No, I can. They're you funky. don't hear scabies, but these bugs, you can. It's like a little. It's like a little. A little chittering. A little chittering. Chitt- 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 yeah. chitt- well, this, this prison's chitt- not very chitt- sanitary anyway, and uh, honestly, I feel pretty. I feel squeamy. Wait a minute, this prison well, has bugs? No. I was just making wine out of the toilet. Right, okay. Yeah, I mean, like, there's it, probably going to be. Some sort of bug. Which, like. 
Angela made a big ass hole in the wall somewhere. Like anyway. I haven't seen guards for a long time. I'm going to take. Could you blame them? Would you want to be around us? No. I'm going to read some more of these. This is uh, so. What is this guy had? Um, all right, this guy had herpes. That was weird. Never mind. I know that's not very funny. Okay. Like, well, it's not right. weird. This guy had okay. athlete's feet. Both his feet. Both? <laughs> yeah. Not just one. Can he had get both. Athlete's feet he had athlete's else? feet on his face. Whoa. Whoa. He had athlete's feet on his face. That's not guy. a good place for it. I heard if you just urinate on it, it goes away. That's stingrays. Oh. This guy uh, has some sort of weird underarm rash. This is weird. Okay, never mind. What? Oh, this is very dermato- derm- dermatological. Yeah, that's it. Oh, are you reading go. all the boring ones? No, these are. So it seems to start as a uh, dermatological issue, and then okay. the, mm-hmm. this is all like pretty serious leukemia and cancer deaths. Here. Been there. Oh, but I was just joking before, but that's no. Actually it seems really like sad. yeah, a lot of these are ending in that actually, um, and I'm starting to get squeamed out. I got all the shit on my back, and a lot of the stuff is very like skin based, and we're in prison. You guys ever heard of the Holmesburg prison experiments? I have not, and that sounds really scary. I know, based but on it everything sounds, you were just saying, sounds itchy. Holmesburg Prison is in uh, Pennsylvania. It's actually uh, visible from the interstate. They're the main interstate, so you can, if you're driving by, you can see this big creepy building on mm-hmm. the side of the road. Uh, it's it's Holmesburg Prison, uh, and it is the site of uh, again several major riots, uh, several decades of abuse and neglect. Is one of the the most uh, notorious prisons in the American prison system. Is it an old old prison? Is this uh, like a Sing Sing or like a like a eighteen hundred? Built in eighteen ninety six. Eighteen ninety six. Okay. Wow. Ooh. And continuous use until nineteen ninety five. Well, ninety five. Oh. It <laughs> had to be really bad the last few years. It had to be really dank. One of the inmates oh. uh, described so it dramatic. as being so <gasps> devoid of sunlight that they felt like that was part of their punishment as well. That they were wow. like oh. they were taken. Sunlight was taken away from them. That they. Yep. Uh, small patches of of outside were available to the inmates uh, for very short periods of time. Like so before was, they knew about vitamin D. I was about to say no vitamin D for yeah. you. In ninety yeah. five, no. <laughs> in ninety five, they were like, I don't give a fuck about like, vitamin like, D. Get back in your bed. Really committed to the darkness things. We're going to stick down it. with Monsanto. Uh, from what I've read, apparently the uh, racial uh, population difference was about eighty five to ninety percent black to white. It was here that Dr. Albert Klingman, uh, or Klingmon, as some of the places have it have it listed, uh, basically found his uh, what he called his fertile ground. At one point, he was famously quoted as saying, when he was introduced to the prison uh, inmates as a dermatologist at the time, all I saw before me were acres of skin. It was like a farmer seeing a fertile field for the first time. That's creepy. creepy. Um, so during the next 20 years, this man proceeded to uh, experiment on the inmates of uh, Holmesburg Prison under a kind of pay for skin sort of scheme in which the prisoners were paid for their participatory involvement in these experiments. Naturally. Um, I'm sure it handsomely paid, too. I'm sure, like, really well. There's some extremely right, disturbing no. uh, photographs of of them conducting their research in which they uh, uh, enclosed uh, mosquitoes that they knew to have malaria oh. on the skin oh, no. of patients and watched to make sure that they were being bitten uh, to make sure that the, the, the virus is going in so they could test these vaccines. Was that uh, infection by vector is like yeah. if the skin is punctured? Yeah. Yes. In addition to that, a, a host of sort of non-infectious um, uh, experiments were also performed uh, on um, anti-aging medication, deodorants, uh, things for athlete's wow. foot. Um, Progress. Marches forward. Basically... They would report to a place where they could offer themselves to be uh, experimented on. In fact, in one one case, uh, one inmate was said to have showed up at the H block, which was where you, the the hospital block where you showed up to sign up for these services every day, asking uh, if if he was needed that day to have whatever the the thing of the day was uh, put on him. <laughs> this is Jesus, just the infection du jour. Uh, <laughs> um, what you got today, Frankie? That sounds expensive. I'll take it. (laughs) So one of the most nefarious uh, uh, experiments that ended up getting exposed later on was actually by the Dow Chemical Company. Of course. Uh, Surprise, uh, surprise. surprise. Not evil at all. I was waiting until a major name dropped. So one of the most notorious experiments uh, conducted during the Holmesburg prison experiment uh, 
two decades where this was happening in Pennsylvania, United States, North America, uh, the Dow Chemical Company in the 1960s basically contracted Dr. Klingman to perform a series of tests involving uh, dioxin, which oh, if... Yeah, that's a very potent uh, nerve gas, is it? Main, uh, I guess, carcinogen, if you want to call it that, in um, Agent Orange. It was the like in the herbicide that they used during Vietnam Shit. that was causing the, uh, the health issues with the Vietnam veterans. The understanding from Dow was that dioxin was lethal, that it, like exposure to laboratory animals in doses of less than one microgram were lethal to laboratory animals and that there hadn't been any cl- actual uh, clinical trials done on humans. They asked uh, Dr. Klingman to perform what was known as the dioxin tests. He would apply an ointment of this chemical, TCDD, Tetrachlorodibenzo-P-dioxin, which is applied to the skin of the prisoners. Most potent, well, they, they, they measured as 75 dioxin compounds. And this was basically, again, from the, the measurements that Dow had provided, well, well over what the lethal dose was that they had already measured for, for laboratory animals. Um, and they were basically asked to test what was happening as they increased the dose of dioxin on these men. Wow. What could go wrong? This is insane. Hey, this stuff is really horrible. Let's find out how horrible it can get. A variety of uh, cosmetic and dermatological products were tested on on the inmates there, including this this nefarious uh, Dow dioxin experiment that happened, and which apparently uh, happened because there was an outbreak of symptoms related to dioxin toxicity at a Dow plant. And one of the results of, I guess, like the uh, postmortem was, okay, we need to find out more about this. So they contacted this prison and said, hey, can you infect a bunch of these prisoners that is with this neat. thing Ugh, so wow. we can find out what it does? Basically, they're trying to figure out how much we make put this in something that doesn't kill you. We know it's going to kill you if we put in too much. Yeah, can we, if we find just enough? So uh, I'm guessing this did not work out. <laughs> You would be wrong. Uh, Dr. Klingman what? actually went on to develop several successful uh, dermatology uh, products. Uh, Retin-A is one of them, which is apparently like an anti-wrinkle mm. uh, cream, uh, as well as acne medication. I'm not sure what the name of it was. Um, is from it topical? This. Yes. Oh. I've used them all. You, you, <laughs> these souls died yeah. so teenagers could have smooth skin. Well, you got to be hot during high school. Like, when else are you going to be hot? Truth. In addition to shampoos that make people's hair fall out and just like, you know, tear, like whatever the, the, you know. At one point, it was described as, quote unquote, the Kmart of human experimentation. Oh. It was comp- companies were reaching out to this prison in order to buy skin wow. off of prisoners. Wow. The worst blue light special ever. And uh, <laughs> it was interesting that we brought up the Nuremberg trials earlier because that actually ties into this. The uh, Nuremberg Code was uh, put into law in 1964, I believe it was, and that essentially uh, made the, the, the parameters for human participation in experiment in medical experimentation they had to certain parameters had to be met, met in order for it to be illegal experimentation that the person had to be aware of what was going to happen what the potential side effects were et cetera, et cetera. Um, and they were the, the argument was that when we were trying the Nazis in the in the Nuremberg trials they didn't provide any of this to the this was like the legal bedrock of the argument that like you didn't tell them any of this shit was happening <laughs> And then now you're going to jail. Well, I mean that's that's true though. You know they correct. Didn't. correct. It's messed up though. I mean it's absolutely horrible and brutal. But at least you told them. Yeah, they didn't say what was going to happen to them though. Uh, right. So using that, I guess, uh, as a as a yardstick for for what would be acceptable, one of the board of trustees of the prison ended up uh, shedding light on the whole thing. He compiled a book and uh, labeled it "Acres of Skin." Uh, of the Acres story, of skin. The oh, story you can read this why book. Why didn't I think of that name? Gross. Band name. <laughs> Gross. Son of a bitch. Eye of the Acres of Skin. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking son of a bitch. So, uh, in 1974, I believe, was when the actual trial for Dr. Klingman took place. Um, and as you can expect, he was like a total douche about it. Like, he didn't really seem to, to understand the gravity of what happened. He said, to his knowledge, uh, no, none of the uh, experiments 
caused any deaths and all had resulted in furthering of the knowledge of the uh, of dermatology and science. Wow. Look at these teenagers skin. I mean, how can you argue how with that? How smooth. <laughs> the death was worth it. They're beautiful. Yeah. So uh, the the guy's name who ended up becoming the uh, the whistleblower, his name was Mr. Hornblum. Uh, he was the literary instructor at the detention center, and and he ended up having, I guess, a lot of uh, uh, contact with the the members of the experiments. Uh, one of the quotes I remember reading was that he, when he first showed up, he remembers seeing uh, an entire yard full of men with bandages wrapped all around their backs, and asked if there was some terrible riot or fight, and was told pretty casually that oh no those are those are the guys uh, in the experiments basically those are the experiments those are the skin moles right exactly. those are, <laughs> yeah. that's my sk- that's my skin what the hell does that mean that's just my skin <laughs> after hornblum left the prison he basically compiled all this information and wrote a tell-all book and uh the result was a an update to the uh u.s national code about human experimentation Participants have to be properly compensated, have to be properly informed of what they're going to be getting into, etc. And the argument was that none of these men were. And in fact, they seem to be preying mostly on people of lower intelligence, people who weren't able to like give traditional you know, consent. And, and the idea that it was being paid for was that it, it kind of put it into this. Did they need money to participate right. in certain things so that they had to go and give themselves? They created a system where it was inherent that it was inevitable that they would sign up for these things in order to just survive in that prison. Exactly, yeah. right. participation was was mandatory to so improve their lives in some weird way. Yeah, exactly. I, I need food that I which need is weak. It's pretty food. weak. The whole right. I need food. Right. Oh well, well, but. Oh. Wow. Um, one of the inmates ended up getting uh, getting out, getting tested by you know independent doctors, and suing the prison and the city for four hundred thousand dollars back in like the seventies or wow. something like that. So it was quite a bit of money Jesus. through the book Acres of Skin, um, and just the news reports that came out of there that it was it was a pretty wholesale type of human experimentation thing going on in the prison. And while I was reading it, it sounds like uh, that wasn't the only one. I mean, there were before that there were several instances of people testing malaria drugs. I actually, read one really disturbing uh, article about uh, a prison in California in like the early uh, 20th century, 190 something, uh, where uh, medical records of testicular transplant ah! had ah! Even what? taken place. Stop using those words. So it was just it was it, apparently the idea of you <laughs> of using prisoners as as uh, fodder for uh, scientific experimentation is is old and strange and terrifying. Yeah, as yeah. a historied presence in America. Well, I don't like that at all. I'm not a fan. So, I don't like that. So we should. Uh, you guys want to get out of here? Yeah, I guess we should really get yeah, out. I mean, of the do you need like an ointment or a salve for that hey. back of yours? Yeah, we're just, just gonna wash it off. Hose me down when we get back to the fort. I'm done being in this Darren. fucking jail cell. Some like, natty no daddy. We'll just shit. pour that down. Oh. It'll kill everything. Darren, what was the guard's name? I thought it was Darren. Gary. Derek. Darren. Oh, Jemin. Wait, Wait I, th- I think one of those worked. I think it was Jemin. Look, the cell doors are open. Wait. That happened suddenly. Hell? That seemed really kind of eerie, actually. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm not going to look this gift horse in the mouth. We're going to get cautiously out. horses have mouses Cautious. now. A lot of cats. Those bastards. That's why I look at them. A lot of cats. Yeah, cats everywhere. What the fuck? There's a, there's a cat that's right a, there. Whoa, whoa. Oh, that's Schmutz, Schmutzy. No. Look, that's fucking Schmutzy. I just see it. Exactly. I know Schmutzy when get I see Get her away from me. Look at her. Why? I don't want any. I don't, I don't want any. Schmutzy just let us out. This seems like a thing we can. I'm pretty sure Schmutzy is the one who let us out. Uh, she wants us to follow her. Follow him, please. Wow, that's crazy. She talks English. I didn't English. know she could fucking talk, dude. I didn't see her mouth move. It just kind of went into my head. Yeah, I think it was in that box. Too that's long. weird. Okay, I guess we really should follow the talking cat I'm already stepping now. All the cell doors yeah. open. There's a cat. Follow me. She's still kind of insulting us slightly, I guess. That's kind of I a little bit. Yeah, I, I expect that. I guess it's a cat. Yeah, a bunch of idiots. Yep, that's a cat. You that's definitely the, a cat. Uh, look at the guard. They're not even looking hey, at us. What are they doing? That they're was pl- sitting on the ground. They're just playing with the cats. His gun oh, is oh, like... Look at that. They're, they're doing, they put uh, his gun down. That's, a, that, that cat, that's the power of cats. They man. all have cats. All of these guys have a cat. Yeah. There's so many cats. Weird. A lot of all these cats. cats are pretty dapper, too, right? You notice, like, the, they got cufflinks. But no, like, no, nothing else. Just cufflinks. And okay, all right. Angela is laying on the fucking desk. Jesus Christ. 
Christ. Guys! What? Guys! Oh, of Why? course. Of course. She got us out? What is this? A butt? Why, why would she eat the prison bus and not something else? Is this a jailbreak? Are these cats... Let's go. Just... Oh, jailbreak. Cats. All right. All right. Sounds right. Get that sounds right. It's going to be a jailbreak. Okay. Uh, Somewhere in this town. Uh, All right. Uh, guys, thank you uh, so much for listening. For we'll get the fuck out of here, man. Uh, what? Uh, uh, Stitcher YouTube yeah, by uh, Heart Radio. Uh, 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 Twitter. Uh, Twitter. Uh, MCT. Uh, 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 Fort, Fort, Fort MCT. And uh, uh, Instagram. Facebook, we got to get Instagram. out of here, man. Yeah. They're going to do... They're going to have some poop. we got to go. So did we just leave a whole prison in the control of a group of an ultra-intelligent cat gambling syndicate? Mm-hmm. Ah!